Hey everybody, Scott Spratzer here, DocSports.com, and welcome to our update for Sunday, March 22nd, 2020. We're going to be talking some NFL thumbnail sketches over the next oh, month or so. And in fact, we're going to, every other day at the very least, choose a different team. We're going to keep these kind of short. And uh, before I get to all of that, a couple of quick notes. First of all, uh, right now as we speak, this is going to be funny down the road in a couple of years when everybody's going to see a guy talking about Brisbane uh, and the NFL at the same time at Hawthorne. Uh, but uh, here's the deal. Right now, they're at halftime as I cut this video. My team, I took Brisbane uh, short spread. And uh, if they win, we'll be 3-0 for our first week in an Australian rules football. If they don't come back and get the win, right now they're down by 9 at halftime. If they don't come back and get the win, we will be 2-1. So, hey, we'd take 2-1 every single week, and we hope these teams are able to keep playing. God bless the boys over in Australia. Let's keep healthy. Uh, and by the way, I'll tell you a little bit more about it as we get closer to Thursday. Our next uh, Australian Rules football selection will be potentially uh, this coming Thursday as the league kicks off its second round and hopefully we'll get there. Uh, so as far as that's concerned, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get closer to the second week of action. As far as what's going on in Las Vegas, no real changes. Uh, we're what, day three or four into a virtual lockdown in Las Vegas and I talked about that in the last couple of videos so I'm not going to bore you with that information, the same information every single day. If we do hear anything uh, newsworthy in Las Vegas where I've lived for over 30 years. I'll certainly talk about it on these videos, but I want to keep them as short as possible. So having said all of that, uh, I just want to jump in and do these NFL thumbnail sketches where they sit right now. Of course, we'll update it later on this summer as we get close to the preseason kickoff. Uh, but again, no particular order. I just happen to be thinking about Todd Gurley being cut loose, Clay Matthews being cut loose. Uh, by the Rams and uh, so we're going to start with the LA Rams first of all you know you can't blame what the Rams did really I guess when they signed uh, Todd Gurley a couple of years ago in 2018 to a 60 million dollar four-year deal and the problem was this season or going into this season is that they had 45 million dollars out there in guarantees so they couldn't trade him I mean nobody wanted to trade for Todd Gurley and be responsible for all of that and also you can't really do a thorough exam physical uh, before you make a trade right now because of what is going on with COVID-19. So it's a situation where the Rams were stuck between a rock and a hard place. They cut him loose and of course the Falcons picked him up. We'll talk about the Falcons. I think we'll do them next just to kind of talk about uh, Todd Gurley in a nice segue from the Rams to the Atlanta Falcons. So they had to do what they had to do. Some of the players in the locker room weren't too happy about it and expressed themselves on social media. Uh, one of the better free agent signings was a re-signing of Andrew Whitworth up front. I know the guy's pushing 40. He's like 38 years old, uh, but still at his position up front on the offensive line, the way he protects Jared Goff, uh, he's like 38 going on 28. And uh, so I think that was a very important sign. And he also got a real nice pass rusher from the Chicago Bears. You guys might have heard about that. And that's obviously going to help on defense for the Rams. Uh, but here's the thing. They cut Todd Gurley loose. If you recall, uh, going back before last season, they were coming off the Super Bowl loss to the New England Patriots. They had a terrific season. Uh, I think something like the 36 games before uh, last year's start, they had gone like 26 and 10. Uh, Todd Gurley had caught for 25 yards or more in 23 of those games. They were 19 and four in those games. And in the other games he played in, they were like five and five when he was held below 25 yards receiving. And I'm getting to the point about the Rams here in the offense as they move forward and why they cut Todd Gurley loose. If you recall back around November 18th or 19th, uh, two seasons seasons ago, the, the Super Bowl run, that season that the Rams made, they were playing that great build up for that primetime football game against Kansas City in third or fourth, second or third week of November, 54-51 final. And I'll never forget, I wrote it down, I talked about it on radio shows for the rest of that Super Bowl run season where Todd Gurley was running out of bounds and awkwardly stepped on a down marker. And really, he, he never was the same again. Uh, he showed flashes at times of being the old Todd Gurley, but he never got back to what he was doing before that. And I don't know, maybe it wasn't that, but boy, I just remember that. And from that point on, he just wasn't the same as a member of the Rams. Uh, so here's what happened in the Super Bowl. You had the Rams you know, just 
high flying, high powered offense, all the stuff they were doing with offense. And then of course you got Bill Belichick, the brilliant mind on defense, his assistant coaches. And basically what they decided to do was put somebody on Todd Gurley out of the backfield because I just told you what the record was when he received more than 25 yards leading up to that. Uh, he, they were 19 and four, those 23 games. So they made sure they had a defender on Todd Gurley. They made sure they were putting pressure on Jared Goff. And that was that, folks. I mean, it was almost as simple as that. They were able to get pressure on Goff. They completely threw off their offensive timing. He didn't have a safety valve anymore in Gurley. And I wrote a couple of notes down uh, back then. And just again, as I was about ready to cut this video to update it. But listen, the 2018 season, Goff has 32 touchdowns and 12 picks. The Super Bowl comes along. New England just made the adjustments I told you about. And if you combine that Super Bowl loss with the 2019 campaign, campaign Goff had 22 touchdowns and 17 interceptions. So from a 32 and 12 season to a 22 and 17 season, and in that division, not good enough to make it to the postseason. Uh, in that particular Super Bowl game, because of the way they changed things up, the Patriots had 12 hits on Jared Goff in four sacks. Previous to that, prior to that, 18 games total prior to the Super Bowl, they had just 34, I should say, Jared Goff gave, was sacked just 34 times in 18 games, and he took just 84 hits in 18 games. And again, the Patriots had 12 hits, four sacks, in that Super Bowl win when they completely dismantled and shut down the Rams offense. So the blueprint was out there. If you had the talent to do the same as New England did, you were able to do it. He goes 22 touchdowns, 17 picks last year and no playoffs. So we're not only going to see the uh, absence of Todd Gurley with this offense, but it's also because they got to change things up a bit. It looks like it'll probably be Malcolm Brown as far as the starting running back. At least that's the way it would be if the season started today. He had over 200 yards rushing last year. Pretty good inside the five-yard line for the Rams. Uh, but as far as the receiver are concerned. Cup, Woods, Cooks. It's going to be a different looking, I think, game plan you're going to see, or this team's going to struggle again. Uh, but I don't know if Jared Goff can take advantage throwing the football downfield in what's going to have to be an adjusted offensive game plan and set that they've had the last couple of years. And he hasn't shown that ability to be super accurate throwing the football downfield, but that's what they're going to have to switch up and do. Uh, they play a base 34 defense by all indications. They're going to do that again. I just told you about the uh, pass rusher they just brought in, which is a really Real nice signing. I'm talking about Leonard Floyd uh, at linebackers. So I like the linebackers for the most part. I look at the schedule, the teams that they're going to play within their division. Tough division, obviously. Outside of the division, looked at those teams. Here's the thing. If you look at the home schedule for the Rams, uh, it's not overly difficult, but I still think they're going to have a rough time topping eight wins when you look at who they're going to play on the road this season. I'll give you a quick run through of that. Home games against Seattle, San Francisco, Arizona, the Giants, the Cowboys, the Patriots, without Tom Brady, the Jets, and the Chicago Bears. Not an overly difficult schedule, especially outside of their division. If you look at their uh, road schedule, of course, at Seattle, at San Francisco, at Arizona, at Philadelphia, at Washington, at Miami, at Buffalo, at Tampa Bay with Tom Brady. So there you go. Uh, I really think it's going to be around an 8-8 eight and eight or 9-7 and seven season for the Rams, looking at who they got rid of, looking at who they resigned. Again, I do like the Whitworth resigning. I know he's getting up there in years, a little longer the tooth, but he still, he plays much younger than his age of 38. And I, I already told you what I like about the addition on defense. So it all comes down to whether Jared Goff can work in what will be a somewhat changed offense this year for the Rams, in my opinion. So there you have it. There's our first thumbnail discussion. Why Todd Gurley had to be let go. Why no teams would trade for him. Why he's going to be signed in Atlanta comes next. And also uh, talk a little bit about what New England did to throw the Rams totally off schedule offensively. And then what happened to them when everybody else got the blueprint. All right. So that's what we're going to do over the next oh, 30 to 60 days. Again, at least Every other day, we're going to be talking about an NFL team. And again, don't forget, uh, I'll be back here at the very latest by Tuesday morning, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific, if not before that. And we'll talk a little bit more about Aussie football uh, this coming Thursday. All right, that's going to do it for me. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. If you like the videos, click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe so you know when we got the videos out there. I do appreciate those who have done so thus far. Stay healthy, everybody. Stay healthy. Stay disciplined. Just like we say in sports betting, you got to be disciplined. Let's all stay healthy. Wish you guys the best. Thanks for tuning in. Be right back here on Tuesday. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com.